Just time to do a tour of the combine. I've always been meaning to do this. Um, I know we always have the videos uh, during harvest of using this, uh, but when I was looking to uh, buy this combine, um, this will be its third season uh, with me. Uh, I spent a lot of time on YouTube uh, checking out uh, videos of 9,500 combines. Um, so uh, my dad and his brothers, they had a, a 9,500. Uh, it had duels, but it was very comparable to this. Um, I actually had never ran it. Um, I was around it. So, uh, so when I was doing this, I was always hoping there would be a video out there of, uh, you know, kind of a tour of the 9500. Um, can't say I know all of the technical pieces of it. Obviously know how to run it, service it, um, adjust it, uh, but there's a lot of things that uh, probably a true combine technician would know about. Uh, but uh, before I get this video way too long, I'm going to start going. Uh, so one of the things usually when I'm uh, starting it up for the day is check the oil. Uh, this uh, platform swings out. It's uh, sagging just a little bit, so usually what need to do is just press up and push out the box into place. So then this ladder comes down and we can get up into the engine compartment. So okay. This is the engine compartment. Replaced the batteries in this particular unit last year. Went through and did all the filters. Uh, the one thing uh, that I had to order up uh, today, this was just temporary. And it's also, um, when I washed it yesterday, I turned it around. Uh, need new sight glasses uh, for the hydraulic reservoir. But overall, uh, you check your engine oil right here hydraulic oil you can check over there this is just access to other panels um, if the bin extensions weren't up you can fill the engine with oil right there so this particular unit um, it's it's a high hour unit <clears throat> um, based on uh, what my dad always said for guidelines with combines it's way over it uh, but it actually had uh, before I bought it um, I don't know if the dealership took it in on trade and then realized there was something going on with it or what um, basically it had an overhaul of the engine uh, prior to me getting it and I know that means very little a lot of times because of the fact that engines uh you know it's one component everything else could be worn out too uh, but just from going over it and the amount of acres that i do it fit what i wanted so run the bin extensions here just give a quick look down into the grain tank not much to it i don't currently have the hooks in right now or the yeah whatever to hold it in place but uh, I'll do that later on overall uh, I know the newer ones are probably even easier uh, to get everything to but uh, pretty nice compartment up here you can look down into the walkers, see there, quite a bit of cob buildup. 
but yeah, overall, this is uh, the view from the engine. So this does have the chopper in back. Um, it's currently retracted just to save room and storage. Um, normally it will take a adjustable wrench, move it out on the cam underneath. Um, that puts that uh, behind the machine. And then the uh, um, where we saw the walkers, that essentially drops down into the chopping unit. Uh, when this is back, these belts tighten up. Uh, this is a power wheel, wheel drive unit. So as four wheel drive when it's engaged, it isn't always engaged for the most part. Um, unless I'm in mud, I don't have it on. Um, just makes it work, work more. So, <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. On both sides, these panels open up, allow for easier access. Uh, we replaced this chain last year. Uh, the one that was on it was really stretched out. I mean, really stretched out. Um, I'm surprised it would unload. Uh, but that's basically unloading your uh, for the unload. <coughs> For the unloading auger and everything such as that. Tailings elevator drops it back down for anything that needed to be dropped back into the cylinder. I really hope I'm saying that correctly. So the way that I was always explained to me and told. So like I said before my dad's combine they had had duels. I kind of miss seeing the duels. Uh, these do work really well, um, but um, I think the duels would maybe ride uh, just a little bit nicer. Um, I really do need to, which I'm probably going to do tonight yet, drop the feeder housing down and look more into the, the concave, uh, check the brass bars out. Like I guess that this, this is a higher hour combine. Um, I'm sure if I would send it into deer for one of their preseason maintenance to, uh, you know, to have it gone over, I'm sure I'd have a pretty hefty, uh, bill, um, with everything that probably should be replaced, could be replaced. Uh, but for right now, um, it does what I need it to do, which is around 110 acres a year of corn sorry about that again just get the view for this side master cylinder so I have the covers off right now um, just because I wanted to get in and uh, see how everything was going the one thing that I know I need to replace right now is uh, uh, these are surprisingly uh, wooden bearings um, for the shoe augers and uh, yeah there's six of them but yeah it's they, those need to be replaced uh, those are pretty easy both to get to and to replace and find and everything like that I run the egg leader system in this uh, so this is the moisture uh, moisture sensor, uh, different modules that go with it and such, but yeah, overall, for the most part, everything, if you need to get to it, um, we'll have panels 
ways to access it, everything like that. So, actually get into the cab. Yeah, but I have to detail it. Yeah, it's dirty. This is if I wanted to get a sample, a grain sample, uh, when I'm combining. Uh, essentially, we'll have access to it right there. My bar that I made, I, should, I need to really paint it um, just to put the... Uh, Starfire 3000 globe, um, so I use that to run on my uh, egg leader so I can do mapping um, as well as track yield. Okay. So it's probably really bad to admit. Um, so how this goes is obviously locked, it was straight up and down, unlocked it sideways. Um, the unfortunate happening once is I unlocked the combine, um, thought I did, but when I normally just pull the door to open, I turned it, so then it was locked. So all is well, I started it up. Most of the time I never shut the door, uh, but it was on, I was out in the field, and I had to get out, and I just shut the door. And sure enough, it was locked with the keys in the ignition. So, uh, thankfully, my uncle came to the rescue, and it takes the same key, I probably shouldn't say this, uh, but probably all models do. Uh, it takes the same key as a John Deere Gator, so we were able to unlock the door and, and go from there. But overall, this is the view from the cab. Uh, this year I'm, I'm going to replace my uh, Remembrance Farm sticker out front. It's, uh, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Um, I like the letters, it just, it can't be the full sticker because um, it, it just takes up too much room. It's in the line of sight. And that's the most important thing. I don't have the monitor in it right now because it's still in the 8245R. But anyways, we uh, if I were to drive this, the shifter to change gears. So you're in neutral, uh, second and third. Um, third to go down the high or the road. Second, one more combine. Just to go. To kind of the controls over here um, if it was a newer combine it would have a lot more a lot more electronics uh, this is very straightforward so this is just running your hydrostatic transmission forward makes it go go forward um, the further you are the faster it's going to go same as reverse uh, primarily this is the toggle switch that i use uh, just to race ahead and lower it uh, for uh, running a corn head this is going to change the speed of your head um, so it's just going to change the clutch uh, down on the header unit uh, to speed it up or down uh, usually we try to get it um, as slow as it goes without tipping uh, the plant over um, just to avoid uh, butt shell um, the other stuff I don't really uh, use up here. Uh, this would be as if I was running a grain head. Um, this is to basically turn your threshing unit on. Um, very, very easy. If you uh, if you have different switches uh, turned on, you can't always turn this one on. Um, or if you get off the seat. Um, it will actually shut the head off. 
um, but um, if I were to begin combining, essentially I, I'm gonna skip a step. Low, medium, and high RPMs. You don't have a throttle like you see on a tractor. So low is just idle, just be, if I was right here, uh, medium, sometimes when I'm unloading, I'll put it, I'll turn it on to medium and then high would be going. So uh, I'd put it on high, I'd engage the threshing unit and I'd go forward. Uh, when I go to unload, this is going to swing the auger in and out. And when it's all the way out, this is the button that you pull up and it will start unloading. Right here is our four wheel drive. So like I said before, I usually don't have it on just because it kind of robs a lot of power. And if I don't need it, I'm not gonna be using it. So, uh, but I could turn it on. Uh, these are the different adjustments for uh, getting your grain quality. Uh, so this is your fan speed. Obviously, Rabbit is going to speed it up, slow it down. With corn, I run it as fast as I can go. I'm not really worried about blowing the corn out the back. So get it up there, get all the trash uh, blown right out the back of the unit. Uh, cylinder speed. I think that's opposite. Um, if I remember correctly, I'm right around 400 RPM for it. Usually the slower is the slower to me is better, or at least that was what I taught was taught. Um, less uh, damage to the grain potentially. Um, and then this, uh, you can see, so this is the gap uh, for my cylinder and running at about three. Um, usually just depends on uh, if I'm getting the grain uh, shelled enough uh, without um, damaging it, or if I have it too close, if I'm getting a lot of uh, stalks in the grain tank, um, I'll know I may maybe have it a little too close, um, or if uh, uh, if I'm getting a lot into the tailings, meaning that it's not really shelling it on its first time. Um, a lot of that is field conditions, but for the most part, um, it's something I monitor, but I keep, uh, I just keep tabs on it, so. Uh, fairly straightforward, older, mo older model, so. Um, smaller buddy seat. I really need to clean out this cab. Yeah. Let me. I should start it up, but I don't really want to. I'll take another video um, tomorrow when I'm moving with it and we'll go from there. But I would be curious on All right, sorry about the alarm. I just wanted to get a feel for the actual hours that are on this unit. How I said that it was on the higher side. So overall engine has 6,218 engine hours. So for most of the guys that know, that's very much on the high side. It has 3,900 threshing hours. So. Uh, definitely a very high use machine, um, especially since uh, looking at the difference between the engine hours to the threshing. So um, my estimate is either it spent a lot of time idling or it was a farm that spent a lot of time traveling. And based on the tires, obviously these couldn't be even remotely the original then at that point. Um, it's wobbly, probably why they're in good condition because um, it's had tires more recently. So this is my attempt to give a uh, kind of a walk around of a 
John Deere 9500. Um, this would have been nicer if I would have started it up. I just um, didn't really want to start it up just for uh, this video when I'll be starting it up tomorrow. Okay, we're good there. Uh, most people already know these uh, steps. If you really wanted to make this more compact, they swivel in. A lot of times people, uh, if they have a smaller corn head, that's what they'll have to do. Uh, look, myself running a John Deere 893 corn head, I don't have any issues uh, with the steps being out too wide. A quick panorama of the cornfield. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of the combine. Um, if you can see, I don't know if it's going to be backwards or not. Uh, it was the first attempt at making a uh, logo and hat design uh, for Remembrance Farms. Um, I kind of like the trucker hats. And uh, I think the logo turned out uh, well. Iteration number one. Uh, but overall, just a quick uh, tour of the combine. We'll turn around and get some corn in the background. Still such a long ways to go. It's, uh, I think I, you know, guesstimating about two and a half months yet, um, which is, is way behind. Uh, obviously everybody knows the spring we had, so. Uh, but I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the tour of the combine and uh, we'll try to get in action another time. Just gonna do a quick drive with it. You got the corn on the driveway on each side. I love looking at that. So, like I had said before, just moving it forward. If I wanted to speed it up, shifted it in the third year you can tell the difference